It's out of your hands you've done all you can do. You've given God the problem. It's no longer up to you. You've prayed the prayer of faith. Now you're standing on God's truth. While you're waiting on an answer, He has a question for you. Is anything too hard for God? Who's got a problem beyond His power to solve? Are there situations He's not the master of? Is anything too hard for God? Only believe, trust His word, you'll see. His plans are now unfolding, performing perfectly. It's clear how much He loves you. Look at all He's done for all. Your questions, there's really only one. Is anything too hard for God? Who's got a problem beyond his power to solve? Are there situations he's not the master of? Is anything too hard for God. Is anything too hard for God? Who's got a problem beyond His power to solve? Are there situations He's not the master Thank you, ladies. All right. Did you, everybody got the handout here? Well, we're not going to talk about the virtuous man anymore, okay? Well, thank you for that. That's encouraging. Can I, can you turn this up? I, I can't hear myself a little bit, and it, it, it I like me. Um, we're going to talk about something, uh, a, a new uh, subject. We're going to talk about the critical man or woman. We'll just use man in the, in, the, in the generic sense of humanity and mankind, but critis, being critical. Um, by the way, let me just say this. Everybody in this room at one time or another has been critical, okay? Um, hopefully not today, okay? That's, that wouldn't be very good. Of course, we're in the book of Proverbs. We understand what wisdom is. Wisdom is ability to apply God's truth to life. Um, there is no harder place for most people to do this than in the area of our speech and the words that we speak. Tonight we'll look at something we must all fight in our words, which is being critical or gossip. Um, gossip and being critical is a two-way street. It's either we're, we're the ones doing it or we are listening to it. It takes two to dance, right? And so... Um, that is what we need to be careful about. When you read through the book of Proverbs, there are key words that you look for when it comes to this. Scorner, scornful, tailbearer, slanderer, whisperer. When it comes to the struggle we all face with this, James really ties it up pretty good if you look at the verses in your sheet there. Talking about our tongue, he says this. Therewith, bless we God. Even the Father, and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of God. In other words, James is saying how easy it is for us sometimes to use our, our words to praise Jesus, and at the next time we're using those words to tear somebody down or to tear somebody apart. And so we need to be careful about that. Verse 10, out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing, 
and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Why is it so easy for us? Many reasons. But we do live in a very negative society. Anybody can find out something bad about somebody. And it seems now with the uh, proliferation of, of social media and, and, and able to get the word out, how much easier it is to tear somebody apart or find something we can use to tear somebody down. There are, there are websites. Um, Mike Medina, he's not in here. He's doing discipleship. But he sent me a story. I'll probably tell the story later on of a lady who inadvertently uh, said something that was really ill-advised on her Twitter account, and it ruined her life, ruined her life. And so because websites and, 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 and not, I was going to say ministries, websites and businesses and shows, that, they, that their whole thing is to find these things and push them forward and tear people apart. Seems like when someone's lifted up in our society or media, many of the same people are also looking for a fault to tear them apart, even if it's hurtful or not their fault. The problem is, if we're not careful and we're listening to all that garbage and that junk, we have a tendency to act the same way, don't we? We have a tendency to, to, to just have our filters looking for something negative and something about somebody so we can tear them apart. And by the way, anybody can do that. So that's what they focus on. You have, if you noticed in our media, they'll, 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 they'll or, or and even in people... They'll, they'll take something and they'll start to rip somebody apart before they even have all the facts. Fact of the matter is sometimes before they even check to make sure if the facts are true. And later on, if something is found out not to be true, the same media won't cut back and say, you know what, I'm sorry I made a mistake. By the way, the damage has been done. They report on it, they throw it out there, and then, oh, you know, they weren't, oh, you know, it wasn't true. They sweep it off to the side, and people are hurt. We do that all the time. By the way, you got to be very careful even the things that you watch or you pay attention to. What, what th you know, even documentaries and, and, and on the History Channel or whatever you watch, they'll put it from a, a slant of what they're trying to promote. It's horrible. They call it poetic license. A movie came out in the 80s called The Last Temptation of Christ, and it was a, a huge firestorm when that came out because it portrayed Jesus as someone who had an adulterous relationship with Mary Magdalene. Well, you know, that we're just, we're, it's just a movie, but they're presenting it as true. Um, he was not the greatest guy in the world. There was a movie recently out about Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, and they threw a bunch of stuff in there that wasn't true, and the, and the producer said, well, I know it's not true, but after all, it's just a a movie, well, you put someone's name in there. People are going to watch that or whatever, but we say things about people, we throw it out there, and people think it is automatically true. And I'm getting somewhere with this. We make up stories to, to tear down people's character. You know, many years ago, I, and I remember in the 80s, um, I like hockey, and there was, there was a, a team in the 80s, the Edmonton Oilers, they were probably, probably the best team of all time. And uh, the thing that was unique about them, they were all very young guys, all in their, their early to mid-20s. They, they won many championships. One year, they got upset in the playoffs. That happens. Golden State Warrior fans, that happens, right? And, and Sports Illustrated, right afterward, came out with a story. By the way, Wayne Gretzky was on that team and a bunch of other guys. They came out with a story saying the reason they lost is because they're all these guys are out of control. They're all doing drugs. They're all doing all this nonsense and all this garbage. Come to find out later there was not an ounce of truth in the story. But that's how we are. See, we like to hear negative so much. What we do is we try to pounce on something or, or we hear something we probably shouldn't hear and we immediately try to spread it without thinking, is this hurting somebody? We'll give you some specifics how to come combat that in a little bit. We assume things about people uh, uh, based on what we perceive they are. We assume things about people perceived by, by, by what, who we perceive they are or perceive about them. Even if it's not true. I don't know if you remember this, but many years ago, uh, there was a, about 10 years ago, there was a firestorm because of the Duke lacrosse team. Anybody remember that story? 
and they were accused of, of the team now that was accused of raping some lady that was there. And because uh, she was black and they and, and, and she was black and the play, all, most all, all the players there really on the team were white and they were considered to be rich and privileged because they went to Duke, the media just ripped them apart. These kids are out of control. And these are bad guys. Well, after a year of digging it up, they found out the district attorney who was running for re-election, who was running for election, fabricated the whole thing. This lady, she was not mentally stable, and they used her as a pawn, and not one, there was no DNA evidence, and it wasn't just one of these things they got away with it through the courts. It wasn't true. It wasn't true. You say, well, that was, you're, you're giving stories out there. How many times do small stories get spread? about somebody. We heard it somewhere. We threw it out there. We talked about it with somebody. How much damage has been done in people's lives because of the words we so idly listen to and we so idly throw out? We got to be careful. It's no better among Christians. We do this in our life. Let me give you a couple things about gossip and we'll get started. I think this is on your paper. Gossip, gossip, and I'll use the word gossip, I'll use the word criticism in the same vein, okay? You understand what I'm saying? Gossip is gossip, here we go, even if it's true, okay? Well, aren't there times we should say something? Yes, we'll, we'll deal with that. You say it to the appropriate people, it's gossip. Did you know the name, you know what the name Satan means? The word Satan means this, accuser. That's what the name means. The word devil means slanderer. Think of it this way. When you slander somebody or you accuse somebody, you are literally taking, doing what Satan's name is. You're literally doing what the devil, the devil accuses us to God. The devil slanders us to God. Um, where's, the, where's proof? The, the book of Zechariah. The book of Job. Okay? Satan had access to God, and he goes up there. And God says, hey, have you checked out Job? Satan's like, ah, accused him. That's what he does. Christ, why as Christians would we want to be involved in an activity which identifies our eternal evil enemy. We must be careful. There's the verses there in Zechariah. Chapter 3, verse 1. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuked thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem re rebuked thee. Isn't that not a brand plucked out of the fire? Anybody can find something negative about anybody. And by the way, some of us I, I, I fight this, and, and I'm way better at it. But some of us, our natural tendency is to, to gravitate towards noticing that which is negative. Is there anybody like that? Just be honest. You're not a sinner. You're probably like me, so that makes you a good person. Right? We just, and if we're not careful, we'll, we'll kill our family, we'll kill our wives, we'll kill our children because we don't notice the good. Oh, you know, look, you know, your kid comes home with, with nine A's and one B, and you know what we notice? Why do you have one B? Look, when Robert got his B, his, uh, one B, his family rejoiced because all the others were way under that. That wasn't slander or gossip. It was true. Okay? That's, that's just how it is. And so we must naturally fight that. Someone has said, if you don't have anything good to say, what? Say nothing at all. Boy, that'd keep a lot of us quiet, wouldn't it? Critics and gossips repeat and share information that, and here's the key, that doesn't need to be shared. We're not talking about sweep and send under the rug, okay? That's not what we're talking about. It has nothing to do with the person they're telling. You know, it's a sign of our times. People talk without having a filter. You know what a filter is? A, a filter filters out things that, like, aren't supposed to get through. And some people, their mind doesn't have a filter. And so when they open their mouth, they don't think, like, you know, this doesn't need to be said. This shouldn't be said. They just throw it out there. It's like, think that through. That doesn't need to be said. 
A good, I think this is in your notes, a good definition of gossip is this. Telling someone who is not a part of the problem or a part of the solution to the problem. They don't need to know. You ever hear someone say, that's on a need-to-know basis? That's true. Everybody doesn't need to know everything about everybody else. By the way, let me ask you this. You don't have to raise your hand. I just like slap my hand. How many, all of us have something about ourselves we wouldn't want some, everybody else to know. Right? Well, that's not a big deal. It's just, come on, I, I, I just got mad. Or it wasn't a big deal. Just something that, I know, but you don't want everybody to know. Then let's not do that to everybody else. Critics critique and find things to repeat, even if it's judgmental, untrue, or blown out of proportion. So I, I like this. I heard someone say this. When I want to be critical of someone, and you're allowed, you can do this, I first start by being critical of myself. I always find that I don't have any time left to be critical of the other person. Right? Think about ourselves. Let's put them in the same. So Proverbs has much to say about it, and we'll go over it for a couple weeks. Look at number one. Saying things about another to hurt their character you say, well, I'm not trying to hurt their character. Then just add, that could hurt their character. Saying things about another to hurt their character means you are acting just like a fool. Proverbs 10, 18. He that, hateth, uh, he that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a what? fool. Now, let's digress back to the beginning of Proverbs so you understand. I don't think, if I look out as a crowd here, the major, you know, I, I'm not, I don't think you, anybody in here really is a fool. You may be and you're hiding it pretty well. Okay, You probably wouldn't be here tonight if you were a fool. Fool is one who ignores and defies God's principles. But just because we're not a fool, biblically speaking, or biblically defined, does not mean that we cannot sometimes in act in ways that are foolish, right? Now, being a fool is not who you are defined as, but it doesn't mean that sometimes we cannot step into the area of being a fool, and when we do that, we suffer the consequences, or we can cause others to also suffer co consequences. You may not be a fool, but in that area, you're acting like one. Sometimes people get this way because of the way they grew up. I heard, uh, we've all heard of Sigmund Freud. He called himself a completely godless Jew. He hated Christianity because as a young man, a young child, he felt that Christians pushed his father around. And he was angry and ashamed at his father because he did not fight back. So he got even. So when he got into his, 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 into his career, he labeled religion as a sign of neurosis, a sign of infancy that people should discard to prove that they had grown up. All of that is a desire to get back at people. That's foolish. But when we act out towards other people, we act foolish in and of ourselves. In essence, when we slander someone, we are really acting with hatred towards them. Freud slandered Christians. Why? Because he had a hatred towards them. By the way, there's much slander of Christians going on today. Why? Our society has a hatred for Christians. Because they see it, our Christian beliefs as a, as a roadblock to the garbage that they want to be involved in. And by the way, our society wants to be involved in things that are silly, immoral, reprobate. That's just what it is. Look at 1 John. When we treat somebody wrong, even a Christian brother, we're acting in hate. 1 John 2, 9 says, He that saith he is in the light, and what? Hateth his brother. Is in darkness even till now. I love Jesus. Jesus is the most important thing to me. And you have ill will and hatred in your heart towards somebody. You know what God says? You're not in, you're not in light. You're in darkness. You need to deal with that. I'll tell you why. Because if I, have, if I have ill will in my heart towards anybody, if I have ill will in my heart towards Alex, and I let that fester and turn to bitterness and hatred, that's not going to just be between me and Alex. That's going to permeate my whole life. 
Bitterness ruins a person. Hatred ruins a person. And what happens? Now we start acting out towards other people too. We get cynical. Why? Because we haven't dealt with the issue. We're walking in darkness. 1 John 2.11, he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. It, it, it permeates your whole life. It changes the direction of your life. It changes how you live. It changes how you act. Why? Hatred ruins you. Whosoever hateth his brother, this is tough, is a what? Murderer. That's pretty heavy duty. And you know not, and you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Kind of hard to hate somebody when you say you love Jesus. In 1 John 4, 20, 21, if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is delusional? No. He's having a bad day? No. He is a liar. Now, I'm going to go on a guess here because it's not specific, but I'll just tell you what I think. When it says he's a liar, I don't think it's a liar about the part about hating his brother. I think he's a liar about the part that says he loves God. That's what he's telling us. Can't love God and hate somebody. When you're slandered, some of you act like a fool. Really, you're acting in hatred towards them. And this commandment, I'm sorry, for he that loveth his brother, he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him. That he who loveth God love his brother also. Does that mean that we don't get irritated with each other? Of course we do. Does that mean sometimes we don't be tempted to not be happy with one another? Of course. But relationships are to be repaired and restored and worked on. Okay? We have to be very, very careful about that. But what happens when we hate somebody, we'll talk about them. We'll say all kinds of things about them. Even if they're not true. And so we don't want to act foolish. Truthfully, whenever we step that line and we criticize somebody and we're hurtful towards their character, we're acting like a non-Christian. It's just not Christian. Number two, a critic is really a hypocrite who seems to be for you while also seeking to hurt you. A critic is is really a hypocrite who seems to be for you while also seeking to hurt you. Now, it's one thing. I don't think it's right to say, I don't like you, and I'm going to tell everybody I can I don't like you. Okay? That's wrong, but at least you've been honest to the person. Right? I'm not saying you do that, okay? I'm just making a point. But to act like, you know, when you're around them, everything's okay and all that, and then the second you leave them, you're completely different, there's something wrong with that. By the way, if you have ill will towards somebody, what are you supposed to do as Christians? Work it out. Okay? If I have a problem with Brother Montgomery, I'm not supposed to go to Brother T.T. about it. I'm supposed to go to Brother Montgomery about it. By the way, can you see me after the service? Okay? I, that's not right. Brother T.T.'s not part of the solution. And if I tell him, Hedgel is? don't think so. To him. But he's, he, he, if I tell him, he's now becomes part of the problem. So stay out of our business, T.T. What they say to you, what they say about you, are two different things. They are sneaky, not to reveal what they, what they really are telling others about you. And by the way, he said, well, it, but you don't understand, what I'm going to tell that person about them and what they've been doing is true. And I, I don't think, then go talk to that, don't tell so-and-so, go talk to the person you think is wrong. Go, are, now, are we Christian? Now, by the way, it doesn't mean we're the spiritual police. Listen, if there's an issue there, like, brother, I want to have a good relationship with you, and here's what's going on, you work it out. But people don't want to do that. Their goal is not to mend a relationship, but to destroy an individual a, uh, did I read the verse? A hypocrite with his, I didn't read the verse, did I? You probably did. A hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Boy, those are destructive terms. You, you, you hear that? Destroyeth. We cause them pain. I don't think we understand how, how our words hurt people. We're so, you know, we're so, we're so just, you know, ugh. 
with what we say. We hurt people. The hypocrisy is really in the fact that they attack you. And sometimes the reason they attack you because they attack you, note this, they'll attack you sometimes in areas they struggle with themselves. Right? We struggle with it. And maybe we don't want to admit it or whatever, and we see someone else, and that irritates us because the truth of it is we, we're irritated with ourselves and our struggle with it. So they lash out at you. The truth is there. Number three. Oh, boy. Please, 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 please. Number three. Never trust a critic to keep something confidential <laughs> because they can't. We'll get to that, Brother Zeke. Thank you. And I had a prayer request about you earlier, but I'll tell someone else. Never trust a critic to keep something confidential. A tail bearer. You know what a tail bearer is? Someone that bears tails. Okay? Reveal his secrets. But he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Someone that's faithful, if they hear something, they're just, it's like, listen, that doesn't need to be told to anybody else. And now, but, but a tail bearer, they cannot wait to tell someone else. Right? Um, you know, Brother Chris, I need to tell you something about Daniel. Now, now you got to promise me you don't tell anybody. Okay? Brother Daniel's got some issues. He was downtown last Sunday. If you don't catch that, forget it. Don't let that one go. Daniel, he was up. I, I saw him take the, I, Were you protesting? I don't think so. You had a very colorful tie on. But, but, can I just tell you something? It's gonna, as soon as I get done with Chris, everybody's going to know it. Tail bear's like, uh-huh. How can you know you can't trust them? Here you go. Because they're listening to you. If they're listening to you, uh-huh, say something you really shouldn't say, what makes you think they're not going to say something? And especially if they are a tail bearer. It's going to be everywhere. You can say, now don't tell anybody, but they will. That's what, a tail, that's what a tail bearer does. If you don't want people to tell, here we go, ready? Then don't tell anybody. That's profound, isn't it? That's why I get paid the big bucks. If you don't want anybody to tell, don't tell them. Well, yeah, I trust this person. I, 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 I know they will. How do you know? It, look, it always comes around. I'm just telling you. And then, how come this person talking about that person, this person, that person? Because you told the wrong person. Before you get home, someone's going to text you and tell you. Because it's going all around. Be very, very careful. Don't, don't be careful. Or worse, sometimes people tell about what's going on in the lives of their loved ones. We're a little too free with that, by the way. Okay? And someone says, oh, yeah, your wife told me. She said, what? Oh, this one said, now, by the way, ch children are different. You ever teach a children's Sunday school class? Be careful about prayer requests. Prayer requests. Uh, all right, who has a prayer request? Johnny, pray for my, my daddy. He was yelling at my mommy, you know. Okay, thank God. Pray for my mommy. She packed her bags. Kids, they, they, children, they don't have a filter. They don't even know what a filter is. You know what it is. It's the thing on the end of your cigarette, right? But they don't even know what a filter is at all. Uh, but be very, very careful. You don't want to, look, especially your family. If you're going to criticize, criticize John Castle. Don't criticize your family. But we have no filter. By the way, sometimes somebody does something wrong. It's not a... Not a horrific sin, if you know what I'm talking about, but they do something wrong, something they're ashamed of, and they're trying to get victory over, and you go tell everybody, that doesn't help them get victory. Come on. It's not being very helpful. Here's what you got to learn to do. Learn to be quiet. We should study that. Very good. Proverbs 10, 12. Ready? Hatred stirreth up strifes. But love covereth all sins. What do you mean? You ever see like, uh, um, you know, if you have a, 
there's like dirt or something at the bottom of a cup and water and it's settled down, what happens when you stir it? All gets everywhere. You know, it's all, like hatred just stirs up strife. You know, everybody's having a good time and they'll irritate this person and do that person just to kind of, just to kind of get the juices flowing and get everybody irritated. Some people are really good at that. But that's not what we're looking for, is it? Especially in Christian. But love covereth sins. Now, now we'll talk later, but that's not talking about gross sins. Okay? Someone's in here and they just killed three people. Uh, we're, gonna, we're not going to hide that. Okay? Uh, by the way, someone does something really egregious, we don't hide sins. Okay? So you, sometimes things happen and say, what do I do? Call 911. It's very easy. Just pick up your cell phone. 911. Okay? If you need to know Roman numerals, I-X, I-I. 911. That's how you deal with things. We're not talking about that. We're talking about someone that, a sin that's just a sin between them and God, and it's not hurtful to other people, and you go telling everybody. That doesn't help. Well, no, I told them. It was a prayer request. Pray for them. Share a prayer request like that. Well, I'm just being honest. Okay. Well, I've been to prayer, and I'm going to get up and say, pray for me. My wife was just a broom flyer last night. Pray for us. Not, not, I mean, not me. Brother, someone else said, would say that. I wouldn't say that. It's like, really, come on. Be very, very careful what we say. We're not helping the situation, and it's going to spread, spread, spread. There's someone that's going to tell everybody. What are our goals when we tell somebody? Do we love the person who struggles? Or do we like the excitement of sharing that which is wrong? Some people just like that. Have you ever noticed that? It's like, by the way, that's why all these television shows, I don't watch it. There's, what is the one, TMZ? There's a show, I think it's dedicated to just gossip about uh, famous people. I, I feel sorry for famous people. I, I don't know how many times I've been at the airport picking up someone coming in from, to our church. Uh, I, like I picked up Bob Gray, uh, and uh, Junior, and I'm sitting there, and and. And this guy comes walking out, and these guys with cameras like, <laughs> and I'm like, um, and and there was a guy there last year. He was uh, uh, he was walking. He was an older guy, and they took his pictures. And I was I was kind of interested. It wasn't Bob Gray, you know? And I'm like, who is that person you just took a picture of? He goes, oh, he's a guy that uh, I think his name was Springfield. He he had a, he had a song in the '70s, Jesse's Girl. I remember that one. I'm really old. I was like three back then. My mom loved that song. It's like, oh, that's the guy that sang that song. And then there was another guy that came through. It's like he was some athlete. I didn't even know who he was. But it's like people just follow them around. You know, we just, why do we care? Why can't we just leave people alone? Shouldn't our goal to be helpful? Now, we're brothers and sisters in Christ, right? Let's be very careful that we're uplifting. Someone struggles, you know, and, and it's like the whole church has to know. You know, be very careful. Someone hasn't been in church for a while, they come back, it's like, whoa, look, look at the cat drug in. Where you been? I called the FBI, they've been looking for you. That doesn't help. Let's be loving and kind to people. And let's watch what we say because what we say damages others, it damages relationships, and it's just very, very hurtful, okay? We're, we ought to work on encouraging people. And by the way, it's easier to say something negative, amen? I can, I can tell you all kinds of stuff. But let's work on encouraging people. And let's not tell, talk to people about things that have nothing, excuse me, have nothing to do with them, and they're not going to fix it. Let's pray.